Terra is a new EV coming out later this year that promises over a thousand miles of range on one charge. In this video, we're going to deep dive into the battery efficiency and performance. And we're going to find out if Aptera's thousand mile claim really holds up. Let's start by taking a closer look at the battery pack. The 41 kilowatt hour battery pack in the first version of the Aptera will be made up of 2170 cells, 2496 to be exact. The 2170 cell gets its name from its form factor. It's about 21 millimeters in diameter and 70 millimeters in height. And it's the same form factor that goes into the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. The version of the cell that I think is going into the Aptera is the Samsung 21700-50G, which was featured in their most recent battery video. I put the specs on the screen here. You can see the voltages, capacity, weight, and specific energy. Let's see how these cells make up a module which make up the full battery pack. Each of these battery modules is made up of 416 2170 cells. It's 32 cells long and 13 cells wide. How did I get those numbers? I literally counted the dimensions from Aptera's most recent battery video and the math did check out. There's a number of different ways to arrange these 416 cells to get different desired results. In basic circuit theory, you can arrange things in series or in parallel. If you arrange things in series, voltage is added and current remains the same. If you arrange things in parallel, Voltage remains the same, but current is added. Aptera has mentioned a 400 volt architecture, which leads me to this hypothesis. I think they're gonna arrange these modules so they have 16 groups of 26 cells in parallel. If you do the math, you see that 16 times the nominal cell voltage, 3.63 volts, is equal to roughly 60 volts. And so that's saying that there's 60 volts per module. And if you multiply that by the number of modules in the entire pack, you get roughly 360 volts of nominal pack voltage, which is right on par for what you'd expect in a 400 volt pack. And since current is multiplied in parallel circuits, our peak current output is 126 amps. This math also tells us the capacity of the module. We have six modules, each with 7.3 kilowatt hours. If you do the math, that works out to about 44 kilowatt hours. So their claim of 41 kilowatt hours is usable capacity, and they're gonna leave that three kilowatt hours left over as a buffer. Cool, so we talked about the first building block, the battery cell itself. Then we talked about the battery module. Now let's talk about how the modules come together to make the entire pack. So the 41 kilowatt hour battery pack in the first version of the Aptera is gonna be made up of six of these 416 cell modules. As I mentioned before, each of these modules will have 16 groups in series, which comes out to a total of 96 groups in series because each of the modules themselves are in series. So voltage will be added across the modules. So you can actually name this configuration 96S26P basically means there's 26 cells in parallel and each one of those is a group and there's 96 of those groups in series. So if you take the nominal voltage of a cell 3.63, you can actually multiply it by the number of cells in series 96 to get the voltage of the pack. And to get the peak current, you can multiply the number of cells in parallel, 26, by the peak current of each cell. So it's really easy to do math with these figures. And this is actually a very similar configuration to the Tesla Model Y long range pack. Because there's more power demand and also more cells, it's arranged in a 96S46P configuration. So knowing what you know, you could put together exactly how that's laid out. I put the final numbers on the bottom of the screen. I talked about total capacity. Usable capacity, again, is 41 kilowatt hours, which I'm quoting directly from Aptera. So how much is this battery pack in a way? Well, let's calculate it. Each 2170 cell is about 69 and a half grams according to the Samsung data sheet I found. We know there's 2,496 cells, so that's a pretty easy calculation. We have 173 kilograms of cell weight, which is the same as 382 pounds. What we don't know is the weight of the total pack. There's obviously going to be a shell around the pack, some degree of cooling, some components within the pack. But we do know that Aptera is claiming a 20% more energy dense pack over some of the leading manufacturers that we may know. They're probably talking about Tesla, but it's hard to say. For reference, the Tesla Model S Plaid has 186 watt hour per kilogram energy density at a pack level. The Tesla Model Y has 180 watt hour per kilogram specific energy, and the Lucid Air has 171 watt hour per kilogram specific energy. 
So if we assume the worst and say they're comparing to a Lucid Air, which has 171 watt hours per kilogram pack level energy density, we multiply by 1.2, 20% better, and we see that Aptera is probably talking about a 200 watt hour per kilogram pack level energy density, roughly speaking. And that would mean the total weight of the pack would be about 443 pounds. I think this is a pretty fair claim because the Aptera has very minimal power requirements. Even peak power is only 150 kilowatts in the tri-motor version, and the actual power consumption in day-to-day -day driving will be extremely minimal, so cooling requirements will be less, and overall mass in the pack will be less. On that note, let's talk about efficiency. So because this thing is so efficient, there's less heat generation, let's calculate how much power this thing is gonna need to just go down the road at a normal speed. When a car drives down the road, there's forces that act on it. If you've seen my videos before, I'm gonna sound like I'm beating a dead horse, but you have the force of air resistance and the force of rolling resistance. You can see the equations on your screen there. Using the power equation, we can actually calculate how much power is needed to move the Aptera at any speed. So we're gonna do an example where we calculate the power required to overcome these forces at 70 miles an hour, which I think is a pretty generic highway speed in the US. Our specs for the Aptera are on the screen there. We have 0.13 coefficient of drag, an estimated frontal area of 2.3 square meters, a coefficient of rolling resistance of 0.008, although it might be a little bit less, and a driving weight of 2,000 pounds. So power requirement at 70 miles an hour, we plug in the numbers, our velocity is 31.29 meters per second, which is 70 miles an hour. And we see that we need about 5.6 kilowatts to overcome air resistance and 2.27 kilowatts to overcome rolling resistance for a total power to overcome 70 miles an hour equal to 7.82 kilowatts. So this is quantifying the amount of forces that are acting on the car at 70 miles an hour. And it's actually directly related to how much power needs to be drawn from the battery pack to keep the car at a steady speed. But we know that all vehicles, whether electric or internal combustion, are not 100% efficient, meaning the fuel that they use, whether it's gasoline or an electric battery, do not convert all of the potential energy to mechanical energy. So in some of the best EVs out right now, like Tesla and Lucid, their battery to wheel efficiency is around 80%. Since the Aptera has fewer components and in-wheel motors, the efficiency should be closer to around 85%, so that's the number I'm gonna use. I have a really cool presentation that I'm gonna link in the description below where you can walk through a full efficiency breakdown of the Aptera and other ultra-efficient EVs. But if you plug in that 85% battery-to-wheel efficiency number, you see that you actually use more like 9.2 kilowatts at 70 miles an hour, and with a full charge, 41 kilowatt hours of capacity, you could drive for about four and a half hours. Driving four and a half hours at 70 miles an hour gives you a projected range of about 312 miles, which is insanely impressive at highway speeds with only a 41 kilowatt hour battery pack. On your screen here is the motor matchup EV efficiency simulator. I've gone ahead and loaded up the Aptera with the specs we used, except the weight is a little bit less at 1,824 pounds. You can see the results there with 100% charge going 70 miles an hour constant speed. Our projected range is 311 miles and we're getting an efficiency of about 132 watt hours per mile. If we drop the speed back to 55 miles an hour, you can see our efficiency dips below 100 watt hours per mile and our range goes above the 400 mile mark. If you wanna check this thing out, you can for free at motormatchup.com. There's a few vehicles you can try out like the Tesla Model 3, Model Y. Let's talk about charging next. I talked about it in the beginning of the video, but max pack voltage is right around 400 volts. And we know that voltage is directly related to how fast we charge. Based on the spec sheet of the Samsung 2170 cell, max current in this pack is gonna be 126 amps. And so to get max charging power, you simply multiply your voltage and your current, and you see that max charging power is about 50.8 kilowatts. It's definitely not as fast as a lot of the new EVs coming out, like the Tesla, the Lucid, et cetera, that are promising over 250 kilowatts. But when you put it into a miles figure, and you consider that this thing can go 10 miles on a single kilowatt hour, it actually isn't that bad. You actually see that peak charging speed on this thing is gonna be 500 miles per hour. Cool, so we talked about the battery, we talked about the efficiency, we talked about charging. Let's talk about the performance of this thing. 
If you look at it from a motor's perspective, Aptera is advertising 100 kilowatts of power in the front wheel drive version, 150 kilowatts of power in the all wheel drive version, and that's simply broken down as 50 kilowatts per motor because this thing is three wheeled. But if you look at it from a battery perspective and you look at that Samsung 2170 spec sheet, they list max continuous discharge current at 9.7 amps and max not continuous discharge current at 14.45 amps. What this tells us is max continuous power is 88 kilowatts and max not continuous power is 131 kilowatts. This is pretty close to what Aptera is claiming, but I'd imagine they're able to pull more current per cell. Again, these are just figures from the Samsung spec sheet. If you look at the Tesla Model Y, for example, they're pulling over 300 kilowatts of peak power and their pack size is almost exactly double. So the Aptera should have no problem pulling close to 150 kilowatts, if not a little bit more. So what does the Aptera look like in a zero to 60 and quarter mile run? Let's find out. On your screen here is the motor matchup drag race simulator. We have the Tesla Model 3 performance on the bottom in purple and the Aptera EV on top. This will be a quarter mile drag race and you'll be able to see zero to 60 times quarter mile times and exactly how these two cars stack up. We can see it's a pretty close race. The Model 3 performance is a quick car at a three second flat zero to 60 with that one foot route subtracted. We can see the Aptera actually hits its top speed during the quarter mile, 110 miles an hour. And we see an 11.8 second quarter mile out of the Aptera. Keep in mind, this is assuming the Aptera has a flat power curve and can pull 150 kilowatts through its full range of speed. There's a good chance the power curve will taper, which means that the trap speed in the Aptera will be less and acceleration at speed likely won't be as great. Before I wrap up the video, I wanna talk about two quick topics. One is battery degradation and the solar panels on this car. So starting with degradation, the Samsung spec sheet says that these cells will have at least 80% of their original capacity after a thousand cycles, which basically means that since each charge is a cycle, if you went 350 miles on a full charge in this vehicle, you could get 350,000 miles out of this car before you would start to see less than 80% of its original capacity. But if you consider degradation over time, it's probably a little bit less than this. Maybe 100,000 miles in, you're already seeing 10% degradation. So a cycle is only 90% of that original capacity. I hope that makes sense. But actual lifetime of this car will probably be closer to 300,000 miles. But that's really impressive, especially when you consider it's only a 41 kilowatt hour pack. And the final topic, solar power. Yes, this car, if you're not aware, has solar panels all over it. Aptera is claiming 700 watts of peak power. And so it's actually kind of a fun experiment to see how fast this car could drive just using solar power. And remember earlier in the video when we used that equation to calculate power at 70 miles an hour? Well, what we can do is actually reverse the equation and make the unknown variable the speed of the car. So if we set our power to 700 watts and we set our velocity as our unknown, we see that we could go almost 18 miles an hour on just the solar power or 700 watts. At these speeds, almost all power to overcome forces is due to rolling resistance, and rolling resistance is directly correlated to the tire and the weight of the vehicle, which the Aptera has incredibly thin tires, only three of them, and it's very lightweight. This is a fun calculation to do, but in real life, it's not quite that simple. This car requires something called auxiliary power, which powers all of the electronics in the car. Think about the main entertainment system, the lights, the mirrors, anything that requires some sort of electricity. In a Model 3, for example, the auxiliary power draw, if you don't have air conditioning on or anything like that, is about 250 watts. So the solar panels aren't really gonna be able to drive this car on its own, but it's a good thought experiment and these things will make a difference when you consider how efficient this vehicle is. Thanks for watching the video. If you wanna check out the simulators, they're totally free to use at motormatchup.com. I hope you learned something from this. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.